The suburban districts of Ulaanbaatar are called Ger districts and are mostly taken up by the characteristic round tents and small wooden houses. The Ger tents have no running water and no toilets and the roads are unpaved. In one of these girls lives Bayara with his wife and two children. I fell off that ladder like a stone. It was my fault, but I had to fix that roof and the ladder was too short. So I fastened one ladder to another. I fell like a stone. In 1991, socialism came to an end in Mongolia and with market economy I lost my job, like many others. I had three small children to support, so I got a job as a bricklayer. Working conditions were hard. To be able to walk again, you need a very expensive operation. I have no money. And would I get back to normal after that? With this operation you would be able to stand, but uh, would still need crutches to walk. It makes no sense to go on like this. I want to get it over with. Doctor, can you give me an injection? The money for the operation was raised by his former classmates. The operation was successful and a few months later Bayara returned to his girl. I didn't want anything. I couldn't move. What could I be useful for? One day, all my relatives ran out of the tent screaming. I didn't know what was happening, but I wanted to find it out straight away. So, I realized I could move, if I wanted to, and go out to the tent and so. Fire! The hills were burning! It was a terrible and yet beautiful thing to see. <laughs> for me to do something, find a job, bring home some money. Why don't you start drawing on felt? You can draw some traditional Mongol patterns and we can go and sell them in a market. On 2003, one year after the accident, I began to ask around for money to start this activity. I submitted my idea for a handicraft activity to the GER project initiative. They liked it and gave me the money. I began to go to markets, participate in art competitions, and so I began to earn some money and make myself known. One day I heard about this Italian organization, IFO, which was supporting projects like mine, but I didn't know how to contact them. Until a young girl, a colleague of mine, told me he had found a way to contact IFO. We went to them and told them about our project. They approved it and supported us with a considerable sum. When I began to get to know IFO, I became aware that they offer more than just cash. I met Entuya, the local coordinator of the rehabilitation program, and received new treatments at the hospital. I became a member of a rehabilitation group, participating in all their activities. At a party celebrating the first 15 years of IFO, I received a prize for my works. Life is much easier for those who do not have a disability. Everything is more complicated for us. Moving around the city, finding a job, having a normal social life. But I'm lucky compared with all the people with disabilities who experience this condition alone and have no solid relationships with the rest of the world who are not organized. Disabled people like me who take part in community-based rehabilitation programs have greater opportunities to learn things, to be informed. We have better chances. Ten years ago, you did not see so many people with crutches or in wheelchairs in Ulaanbaatar. Now, people with disabilities are much more visible and their situation in the city is picking up. People are looking at us in a different light. We are not shunned anymore. But this change of mentality 
can only go on with the activities of associations like IFO and the active involvement of us, the people with disabilities. I am building one story brick house nearby. It will have two rooms, one for me to work in and one for my family. Then I'll build a second floor where my children can come and live. In the workroom that I'm going to have, I will seek the involvement of other people with disabilities, as well as other people who are simply disadvantaged, like the alcoholics. I want to pass on my skills to others, so they can work too.